So I finally got my iMac back, uh, and it's not the end of the story with that, but more on that, I guess, in another video. But now that I've got the iMac back, I can get external video off my Sony uh, camera, which means that I'm going to be able to show you something that I haven't been able to show you uh, previously in this series of videos about using the iPad Pro 10.5 inch for content creation. And that is to show you what it's like to actually edit video uh, on the iPad Pro using the iMovie app. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you um, putting together a really simple video that I took at Minidisc today, comparing the uh, LS50 and the LS70. And then in the description, I'm going to link to the actual video that I uploaded once I've edited it together on the uh, iPad. So at the risk of getting slightly meta, let's just dive right in. And we do that by first selecting the video that we took today. So we got four parts. The first part is actually the uh, intro for this channel, which I've rendered out in 4K. So whoo, now everything's um, up there in the uh, resolution wise. Uh, I don't know where I'm going that. Anyway, so the first annoying thing that I'll say about editing movies uh, in, in iMovie is for some reason when I select the video, uh, it it puts it on the timeline in this strange order and I can never work out if it's chronological or reverse chronological or anything. It's never right. So what I actually had to do is to drag around the uh, parts of the movie uh, into the correct order, which means that I have to drag it to the beginning. And this bit is probably the most tedious bit when it comes to editing. And you can see that scrolling performance uh, of the of the iPad Pro is very very fast even with this 4k video stream I'm actually really impressed by the performance uh, of the iPad definitely the hardware there is there to sort of uh, go through these clips now okay we've got all the clips in the right order and normally I would be doing this on headphones uh, I've been using my Oppo PM3 to use as a monitor for the iPad because it's you know decently isolating and I've been actually able to make uh, edit videos in coffee shops of all places so you know the dream is a lie uh, but we're gonna do this with the speakers so you can hear what's going on I'm just gonna edit the transitions now to cut off the uh, slack so this clip starts off at the beginning me trying to figure out what to do um, you know panning to wing we're not gonna have that at the beginning of the clip because we actually want it to start here so here I am at mini disc with an so what we do is we just bring the front of the clip to there. Now, this is the other thing that is slightly irritating about the way these, uh, these end and beginning markers work for the clip. It's not altogether clear to me whether the end of the yellow bar or the beginning of the yellow bar is the beginning of the, the clip when I, when I cut it. And I've been using this for a few videos now and I can still not work it out because it almost seems like the answer is it's something in between. But once you get the uh, transition worked so out, oh, actually that was so a little earlier. So we can actually use the waveform to work out what we're doing. So let's do that. So here I am at Minidisc with an iPad in one hand and a bag of beef jerky in the other hand. And again, I'm getting the ex the audio from the Sennheiser clip mic that I had connected to the iPad while I was taking this video. I cannot work out a way of getting external audio onto the iPad um, to, to sync up in iMovie. Maybe there is a way, let me know in the comments if you do know. But for now, the Sennheiser gets pretty good uh, quality. And we have Wing here. Hello, Wing. Um, I've got I've got two questions for you. One, can I try the LS70? And two, do you want some beef jerky? So what I want to actually do at this point is I want to split the video because I want to use the audio from the next bit, but I actually want the intro to go over this video uh, instead of uh, instead of the video. So what I do is I bring up the clip and then I press split here. So that brings me to the end of this. And two, do you want some beef jerky? Yeah, sure. Okay. And then, actually, maybe I want a bit of wing saying. Okay. So, what I want to do is actually I want to come in a little later than that once wing gives his reply. Beef jerky. Yeah, sure. 
Okay, so I've split it here. And the other thing annoying that I, I don't like when I press the split button is that the clip moves a few millimeters, some sort of weird interface oddities with iMovie that don't have that same sense of precision. So again, it's not a hardware problem. And I kind of wish that Apple made a version of Final Cut Pro for the iPad Pro. Uh, but uh, I wish they would iron out these little things because they make me a little nervous when it comes to the editing for this. But anyway, what I want to do is I want to hit detach audio here. And now I have the video from this clip detached from the audio. So what I can do is I can drag the video here for the channel intro and then push the audio there and then delete this clip here. So let's see how we go with that. Okay. So I only want the bit where Wing says beef jerky. Mm the magic of editing, folks. This is what you're seeing now. And, um, you know, this is already a bit more complicated than I would usually do uh, for most of my videos, namely because I am normally the only one talking. Okay, so I don't like a fade transition. If you've watched enough of my videos, you know that I like kind of smash cuts, a bit more fun that way. I don't want to fade. I've noticed that there's a little bit of a fade here. Uh, let's see if there's a reason why it has a fade. I think it may have inherited the, the fade. Oh, what did I just do? No, I, I don't want to do whatever that button just did. Um, it may have inherited the fade uh, from the from the previous clip, uh, from the previous transition, but I don't want that fade anymore. So. I'll put it here. So this is what I do all the time, basically, when I edit videos. And the funny thing is, it's, it seems like a tedious process, but I personally, for some reason, I really love massaging transitions and getting the timing right and everything like that. Uh, it, it called me odd, I guess, but that's, it appeals to the inner pedant in me. But I, and I also like that sense of magic of being able to create a narrative through editing um, that wasn't previously there in the raw footage. Okay, okay, so maybe I want a little bit more of that video, that uh, audio. So that we, 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 we don't actually um, have the audio cut out. Great, okay. And again, I bring down the volume of the channel intro and I'll bring down the volume slightly of the... Because uh, I'm worried about that paper bag. Now, okay, so we're gonna repeat the same thing with this here. He is distracted by the... We're getting the transition right, and again, I'm being misled by the yellow bar, which is very irritating. So while Wing is distracted by... So while Wing is distracted yep. by the beef jerky, I've got the uh, LS... And again, and I'm not gonna do anything like color correction or anything like that. I'm, I'm happy with the, the footage directly out of the iPad. Uh, if I was doing some sort of serious professional project, maybe I would do all that sort of stuff, but not really necessary in this case. So on this next transition, ordinarily, if I was on Final Cut Pro, I would insert a generator because between here and there, so I listen to five. I want to show that time has passed. So I would put a title card in here and then write, you know, one hour later. Um, in this case, as far as I can tell, and correct me again in the comments if I am wrong, I cannot work out how to generate a clip that consists only of a title or only of text in iMovie. So the next best thing I can do, basically, is to take this clip here, use the opening uh, bit of it to add a title, like say, um, let's have the title here that says one say one hour later, okay? And then do a transition that is perhaps, we'll try wipe and see what that looks like. In this kind of price range. So I listened to five or six tracks. So that's decent. Now let's, let's see what the different transitions are. And again, you'll notice that it generates the transitions pretty much instantly. See, no, that doesn't look too good. Uh, unless we go for a slower fade, let's see. 
performance models in this kind of price range. So I listen. You know what? Let's go cheesy. Let's go for a, a, a wipe because I very rarely use wipes. I think it's one of the reference models in this kind of price range. Now, what's that, what that has done is messed up the timing completely when we um, introduced that previous transition. So let's go back in this kind of price range. until we can go back to the previous wipe. I like that. In this kind of price range. So I listened to five or six tracks on my Khan uh, between all three of these. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish off the edit and then I will show you what the uh, upload process is like in, in, in terms of the rendering speed. So I got the video all edited now and now I'll show you basically the upload process which is basically uh, I hit the share button and then I select YouTube and then I select 4K uh, and then I'm going to sort all of these other details out in the YouTube app but for now I'm going to hit share and then it's going to render the video first uh, into a YouTube friendly format. Um, we don't get any selections in terms of, you know, bit rate or anything like that. Again, very dissimilar to the, to the options that you get on a desktop computer. Um, and then it's going to upload to YouTube. I guess I uh, will make a comment for a five minute video, the 4K rendering speed is pretty impressive. Again, I can't really compare it to the 4K rendering speed of the 4K footage from my Sony camera because that's a different bit rate. Uh, I'm assuming that the bit rate that's taken on the iPad is not as not as uh, not as high because the Sony shoots 100 megabit video, but it's still pretty good. Um, and my other comments, I would say, my other final comments is that honestly. I'm sort of glad that I had the problem where my iMac had a uh, had an issue and I was forced to use the iPad for several videos to make several videos because it's really sort of made me realize despite the sort of the fiddliness I guess of some of the applications of using iMovie of getting external video in and out when, when push comes to shove this is actually very very capable I'm honestly surprised at how good the cameras have been, um, how good the editing performance have been, has been, uh, and how easy it has been to actually make videos using the iPad. It's not something that I'm going to do all the time, but honestly, it's it's been easier for me to use than the combination of the GoPro with the desktop computer and you know syncing all the external audio and blah 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 blah. For my purposes, for very simple, for the very simple videos that I make. I've been finding that I would have killed to have a little device like this uh, when I first started my YouTube channel because it's a big, big viewfinder for a decent quality camera. It's a color accurate screen. Um, it can edit 4K video with not much of a hiccup. And again, for my very simple purposes, I am more than pleased with the with the performance of this and the only thing that I think really holds it back is the software uh, and I'm really hoping that with iOS 11 with the better external file handling or the or the file system that's going to be introduced in iOS 11 and hopefully with some more capable pro level apps uh, instead of iMovie things where I can actually do custom titles and animations and more of that sort of thing uh, uh, and and you notice that I've been doing most of this with my finger because I've been finding that the pencil is not that much uh, better to use for iMovie, um, but applications where I'm going to be able to use the the pencil to really improve the overall um, uh, the ease of use of the whole editing process. Anyway, um, this bit is a bit like a bit like uh, watching paint dry. It's not particularly interesting. Once it goes to exporting movie, then it's going to go to upload movie. You can check out in the in the description of this video, there's going to be a link to the actual finally edited version of this video. But uh, I hope this has been interesting. And then I'm going to cap off this series of videos about content creation on the iPad with just uh, with a review of the whole thing. But I've given you my basic thoughts on it in this video already. And I hope that helps you out. Anyway, see ya.